All right, so this is dealing with dysphoria. So lately I've been struggling a lot with dysphoria. I feel like my body's like realizing we don't have all this extra stress that we've been putting up with for so long. And it's like, okay, now it's time to deal with this. Um, but it's really hard because there's not a lot you can do for it like in the moment, you know? Like, yeah, I can do makeup and I can make myself feel a little bit better, but, you know, the things that I really want, you know, surgery, um, take a lot more time to, to make happen. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of us struggle with. I know I struggle that with that a lot myself. It's like, you know, not only, you know... How much longer is this going to take before I can get, you know, the things that I feel like I need? But, you know, is it even possible? Like, some of these surgeries are, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, you know. And, like, literally for me to get everything I want done is going to be, like, you know, $70,000, something like that. And that's an insane amount of money to, to think about when I've never had more than two grand in my bank account. You know, and even then it wasn't like a healthy two grand, you know, I was, I was stressing myself out. I was killing myself at work. Like it wasn't a sustainable, you know, life. Um, but I think one of the biggest things we can do for ourselves, um, when we're looking at the future is just to be open to the fact that we don't know all the possibilities and, you know, there are so many things that that are out there that we may have not even thought of before. And, you know, the more I started looking into my surgeries, the more I, I started finding these these grants and these programs to help people like me, like us, you know, actually, you know, make some of these things into a reality. And, you know, not only that, I found out that there's a lot of states that, you know, ban exclusions on healthcare. So, you know, if I can get over there and just get decent insurance, you know, that $70,000 worth of surgery goes down to like four or $5,000, you know, and it might be, you know, something that I have to wait until, or, you know, I have to put myself in a position where I can actually, you know, move to a different state and to be able to support myself like that. But just having that knowledge and, you know, having those different ways that I can, I can make this happen, it, it makes it a lot easier for me to, to hold on to my motivation and my strength and my drive to move forward. Um, you know, I really feel like so much of what trans people deal with is just a sense of hopelessness. Like, hey, I'm in pain. I've been in pain for so long. No one is doing anything to help me like you know is it like how am i supposed to deal with this pain you know and i feel like with a lot of other things you know that cause that severe of a level of pain you know there are programs there are you know you know insurance you know there's a lot of other ways to to get help you know, and I feel like one of the biggest things with being trans is, is this feeling that you're doing everything by yourself and that not a lot of other people understand what you're going through and not a lot of people really can support you in, you know, the way that you want because they just don't understand it. They don't know how to, how to deal with it. And that's a very frustrating thing. Um, trust me, if you've seen some of my videos the last couple weeks, like, you can see me full on breaking down, you know, from just how unfair it is, but, you know, and this, this is the shittiest thing, but it will also set you free. Life isn't fair, and it's our job as people to make a better world for our children, and, you know, what, what helps get me through it is, yeah, I might be dealing with a lot of adversity and a lot of things that a lot of people aren't having to go through, 
But if I am able to live my life authentically and do the things that I want to do, I can provide at least a space where people don't have to go through that, you know, and hopefully, you know, people pick up on that and run with it. But, you know, I can at least create a space where people have access to the the tools and the resources they need. And that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me pushing through. You know, I just... I feel like it's it's so easy to, to get caught up in everything that's happening to you, but it's so hard to remember that we are so far from where we came. And even 30 years ago, you know, people were just dying left and right from the HIV crisis in our own community. And there was nothing anyone could do about it. And a lot of people were just letting them die, you know? So it's like, yeah, a lot of these people would literally let us die if they if they had the option, but we have to provide for ourselves and our communities to make sure that we are getting the care that we need. And no one else is going to fight for us. So we have to fight for ourselves. And that's, I think, one of the hardest parts. You know, our community is so disenfranchised and so fractured and split into you know, really, I hate to say it, but unhealthy little pockets of communities where, you know, sometimes I've seen a lot of love and support and there are really healthy and beautiful trans communities out there, but there are also a lot of places where those resources just don't exist and people don't have access to the support and guidance and the care that they need. And we need to be the people to do that. We've always been the people who have had to do that because no one else will and it is getting better and people are finally starting to take up you know that that cry of hey this is this is not fair we should not be treating these people like that but at the end of the day it's always going to be on us to to make sure that we're getting our needs met and you know that's something that's really hard for me to deal with you know, because I want the world to be fair just as much as everyone else. But at the end of the day, you got to make what you can out of the life you're given. And that's all I can do today. So I'm going to keep on trying to push through. I'm going to keep on doing the things I need to do to care for myself. And I'm going to keep on believing that there will be a point in my life where I am not in this much pain. And, you know, I'm going to hold on to that with everything I have. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to do some positive affirmations. I am love. I am gratitude. I am kindness. I am grateful for the opportunity to live this life. No matter how painful it is, I'm going to make it. I am grateful for the friends who've been there beside me to show me that I'm not alone. I'm thankful for the other trans people in my life who've shown me that you can do this and that it doesn't have to be so painful. I'm I'm gl- I'm grateful for the role models that I've seen, you know, in my own life and you know through different forms of media. Um if you've never seen Pose, it's a great show. Go watch it. Um, I'm so grateful for the people that haven't given up on me and who are constantly encouraging me to to do the things that I need to to better myself and to to keep on pushing and and growing and you know fighting through the pain to to be who I am and you know, who remind me of how much progress I've made and how much courage I have and how much strength I have. I'm so grateful for those people. Um, I'm grateful for my family for finally coming around and supporting me. Um, I'm grateful for the conversations I get to have with them. I'm grateful for feeling like I have a family again. Um... 
I'm grateful for the air in my lungs and the life I'm living. Sometimes, and you know, I just had to do this for myself today, just breathing can mean the difference between life and death. And um, I'm so glad, grateful to be able to feel, feel gratitude for air and for, you know, the basic things that, that bring me joy and happiness and that bring me life. Um, I am just beyond grateful to still be here, that I didn't let any of my negative thinking cause me to spiral into, you know, serious self-harm. Um, I'm grateful when I reached out for support and, and guidance that I was able to get it. And I had wonderful people that were able to talk me out of the worst of my, my self-harm and, um, suicidal ideations, you know, um, I'm so grateful to, to be here today. So thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for listening. I really, I want this to to uplift y'all and I'm so grateful that y'all keep coming back and watching this and letting me use this platform to enrich your lives um I really you know I hope that's what I'm doing I think hope is a silly word because you know there's so many times that we rely on hope and then you know what happens if it doesn't happen you know, but I, I really want y'all to be able to get something from this. And I do feel like y'all are, and that makes me happy. So thank you for joining me. Um, these positive affirmations are for you too. I am grateful to be able to create this spot where people can heal. So much love always. And I'll see y'all next time.